But yeah, uh, it's going to be Villa again. So that's going to be pretty darn interesting. We will have, uh, I believe it was Chaos on defense, right? So they're going to have the advantage Correct. early on. And here's your community vote. Who's going to win it? You think Mockett's going to win it. All right. They were the, Two thirds. They were the ones to actually lose yesterday. Chaos won. Uh, but there you go. That's what the community thinks. Villa will load right on in and see what the actual result will be. I mean, to be fair, Mockett did play G2, who, as you noted, have only lost something like two or two, one match. I guess two matches now, technically, in any f official yeah. capacity. Over the last season in this one. Over quite a long period of time. Also, just wanted to say, by the way, uh, we tried. I tried to rhyme, and during the break, I checked my phone, and mm. a, uh, they said, a team that drones together owns together. Yeah, I think that's the right one. Who was it? Who said that? Uh, it was Samsonite. Samsonite. Nice one, Samsonite. Big I, ups. Big I, ups. High five, buddy. Big ups. I saw this a team that plays together, slays together. I like that one, but it's I think it's they both phrased. work, but I think that this, the drone one was very specific for what we were looking yeah, at. Yeah, because we, we were talking about droning and the, the, the stays together and slays together. Was that the one? Plays together and slays together. Plays together. That one strays away from the droning. And speaking of straying away, band phase is happening, and we've got Glaz and Maverick gone. Maverick, an uh, uh, operator that we talked about uh, possibly being banned in the previous Villa match because uh, he's just very commonly banned on this map. But he wasn't. He was left open, and here, not so much. Mira and Pulse will be the defenders taken out, and both of those make sense as well. Mira, um, less sense in my opinion. I mean, Mira is definitely a really uh, powerful operator, but on this site, there's often, you know, there's like situations, for example, when you're defending AVG and you you could put the mirrors facing study. I often find those mirrors are more to the detriment of the defense, especially if the enemy plays a Twitch. So now having her not here, mm, I don't know if that was a merited ban. We actually don't see that much Mira at all on Villa typically. Yeah. In fact, I believe there was a, I think there was a thread on the, the Pro League subreddit that basically asked, like, why don't we see teams playing Mira on Villa? And that's just simply, yeah. as you noted, you can destroy the floor underneath almost every single commonly held mirror spot. Mm -hmm. You don't really have any positions where you can, you know, feel safe that you're not going to have any vertical Attack pressure. So, and obviously that's a big consideration bombs. because even if there is no Twitch drone, as you noted, you've still got the ability for a Buck to get under there, a Jackal to get under there, an Ash or a Zofia to get under there and be able to pop that mirror wide open. So I got to reiterate, I, 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 don't, I don't know how I feel about that mirror ban. But at the same time, I'm sure Chaos has some specific reason for getting rid of it. So we'll see if that is to their advantage moving forward. It also does mean that for the first time in a long time, that I, in my memory, we have both Echo and Maestro left unbanned. You don't see that very uh, often. In fact, in the first match of the day, it was Maestro and Echo both being banned. Five and Penta versus the Scream. I mean, obviously, it does happen. It's just. It's a little bit less common than everything else. Yeah, I mean, they're two of your best post-plant operators. They're really good in the execute phase as well with the attackers. They're information gatherers. They do a lot of things. Also, I think you could possibly argue that uh, Maestro has the best gun on defense at the moment, I would say. Oh, no, that I would LMG that. Yeah. with the ACOG on it and an enormous 81 bullets in the magazine. So... Belt fed, rather. Speaking of, you can hear the Maestro Alda going off. It's got great caliber-based destruction, a lot of bullets to be able to open things up. And then, if need be, he's got the Bob sidearm of the Bailiff, which is the shotgun revolver that can also be used in a pinch. KS had just wandered right in, and he's going to be under fire from two different angles. He Make almost gets free. pinched. It's going to be Secretly, who jumps on top of him as Rip takes out Vital, and that's both teams losing somebody. The mute off the board, it's going to be both the... SMG as well as the C4 off the hands, but Renewal's there just tears right through crying and you lose the Thatcher. Mocket finds himself at a disadvantage. I feel as though we've seen Mocket, I think, enter into a kind of an odd push downstairs without clearing out the proximity of said push, allowing for a three-way crossfire and some bodies on the floor, the wrong type for Mocket. And they really need to start fighting back, but uh, Chaos is going to put even more on their side. It secretly takes down Rips. Corey able to refrag it, though. Renewals goes down, and in a two versus three, this is looking a little bit better for Mocket right now. They've also got secretly on very low HP. As you can see, he will die to very likely to a single bullet from either of these two attackers, or potentially just a little bit of that asphyxiating bolt. I was going to say, he's still got the ability on Mocket's side of things to be able to cut off some angles, but the bigger issue that Mocket is going to have, number one, Red Group uh -oh. is likely uh -oh. going to have a... Oh, that's a whiff and a half from Vale. 
as he just cannot land his shots that he needs to. Thank goodness for them that Corey is there. The Thermite is able to finish off Red Groove, who had pushed out as secretly was the one that had actually been credited for the kill onto Vale, which is going to leave Corey in a must-win situation without the diffuser inside of Bathroom. And he'll look in towards the sights Attackers inside of Astronomy. He's likely going to have a goo mine or several in his way, but he's not going to quite get there. The doorway will be a little bit too far as it's Crips holding a beautiful angle and just spraying right down with the MP7 to give the very first round to Chaos. So yeah, I think a miscalculation there on Mocket's side. Uh, that entry downstairs, really poorly gauged. Uh, they put a little bit too much muscle behind it too. If it had just been Chaos alone, less damage done, they could have probably recovered. Uh, but in the end, not enough muscle behind the push into Master. And I think that's what ended up costing Mocket that round. They started the recovery, but it just wasn't enough. And that miss, uh, was, was, I believe it was Vale, who was uh, missing quite substantially onto Red Groove. Eh, that's not what you want to be seeing. I understand Capital's uh, para is a bit of a noodle gun. It bounces all over the place, but at the same time, it does a lot more damage than it used to, and uh, I just can't. I, I can't excuse it. I, it's definitely something. It's definitely a situation where we would have, we should have seen uh, a little bit of more dominance on Mocket's side in that engagement. Now we're gonna see Chaos move over to AVG after winning a trophy, and uh, this is going to be another one of those sites that Chaos should very easily take. Again, this being a defender-sided map. You see, the, the big thing is going to be through the rest of the next five rounds, could Chaos keep up this pace, right? Are they going to yeah. be able to continue to win it? Because we saw a good lesson in what happens when you don't win the rounds that you're supposed to in matches one and match two of the day. With yeah. both of the teams starting out, Penta starting on defense on Clubhouse, you figure, okay, they're going to have to walk away with three of possibly, uh, or four of those rounds. Well, they won one, and then you get look at G2 doing the exact same thing on Villa, and they walked away with three. So Chaos' lucky number is going to be four to five. If they can secure that many uh, defensive victories, they'll be in good position heading into their attack. You know, Parker, I feel like as soon as we talk about, we start talking about, hey, this is a defender-sided map, people start losing on defense. I don't know if you've noticed that, Every time we bring it up, it's like, oh, oh and now they're uh, they're losing the rounds they should be winning. Weird how that works. Now, Maka going to be clearing their way into Master and Astronomy. It's got a good amount of control with relative ease, and that's all thanks to the excellent drone work that you're seeing there on Maka's side. It's still slow going here on this clear. Got control of that north side, and uh, once they start their push over to the site, you have to be wary about these barrels being pointed in their direction. You see Crips playing in what looks to be study. And if he's not contested from outside, he could just stay there and uh, pivot to either site. Good mark there. KS, though, unable to comp uh, capitalize. See, just a little half damage uh, done to the Maestro. Losing renewals early would be a big blow, not just from a firepower perspective, but also because if people need reminding, those evil eye cams get locked into place. Speaking of, it does appear that with Rips taking control of 90, he's also been able to pick off an ADS and using one of those explosives from his lifeline uh, also take out, <laughs> oh no, also take out the evil eye. But look at this, a mistake from Rips will cost Corey two rounds of the ex Kairos as Crips was intended to be stunned from the Zofia of Mocket, but because of the miss of that first concussive mine, it allows that wall inside a vault to be held firm. And that's a huge thorn in the side for Mocket. All right. There was the ADS. We don't know how much of it was burnt, but at the same time, it Definitely miscalculation there on the Zofia and Habana. Speaking of miscalculating, Corey will lose the fight as he attempts to challenge Renul's inside of that gun, uh, gun vault. Not going to be able to win it. And Renul's gets a second for himself. A clean shot on Tavail. Chaos able to get the refrag, but not on two Renul's, who is on an absolute tear right now. And if left alone, I think he's going to get more. And yes, he will. His third in the round and all three for his team before secretly has managed, managed to get rips. It's all up to Chaos now from study, and he's doing his best, but Renewals will get his fourth, and Chaos take it off the back of this Maestro. Excellent gunplay and positioning here for Renewals. Smile. Wow, that incredibly clean gunfight there for uh, the Maestro. 
Renewal's just absolutely carrying the round for his team in terms of gunplay, not even necessarily in utility. And Maestro is an operator who I think does a pretty good job at both, Michael. I don't know if yeah. you agree with me there. I, so. I would agree with you, Parker. And of course, Villa is also a site where Maestro has an endless amount of possibilities. Those evil eye cams can be put inside of site, fortified around the rest of your team, and very difficult for the attackers to be able to use their utility to destroy said evil eyes. Or you can use them as scouting tools, as you saw from one of uh, Renewals' evil eyes inside of the corner of 90 underneath the Defender default cam that is there that usually gets picked off. So it's been a perfect start to this matchup for Chaos. Renewals and secretly shouldering the load for their team all but one kill in their favor, which is Crips who has the other, which was actually the round winning kill on Trophy and Statuary to start things off. Because both Trophy and Statuary, as well as AVG are locked, we're gonna go downstairs to Kitchen once again, foregoing the library slash living room, which we haven't seen at all today. We've witnessed up to this point 14 rounds of Villa, and it has been completely Ten absent. To go. I mean, you were talking about living room? Five seconds left before yeah, living room library. Yeah, we're, I don't think we're going to see any living room. Nobody wants to go to the living room. Attackers recovered the bomb diffuser. Not Attackers with that attitude, you know. It's a terrible bomb site. I think we've seen it. We've seen it a couple times, but it did, yeah, it is a really atrocious bomb site. We talked about it before. I mean, it's just it's so easy to isolate the southern end and just yep, plant. There's not a whole lot the defense can do about it. I mean, maybe it'll get worked out uh, by some team in the future. Like I said, we've seen some teams attempt to defend it, but not not successfully that I can recall. I mean, we had a, no, we've had a couple wins there, but anyway, I'm gonna move on. Pocket. <laughs> Clearing out the top floor, and they've cleared out pretty much most of the southern end. Uh, so, yeah, this is what we usually see here on Villa. you got to clear out uh, to make sure there's no roamers. Then you'll stick one person on that flank watch, or maybe just a drone on the flank watch and start your push. Uh, but uh, either way, they have not fully cleared out the top floor. As you can see, Renewals, who got the 4K last round, doing his darndest to uh, hold up this attack. Being watched intently by the eyes of what appears to be a deer in Ooh. front of him, or a steer rather, is he's going to play around the body of the stuffed animal, so to speak. Great taxidermy in front of him as Renewals will now push up and aims for the knees of the Ash, hoping that the recoil will carry upwards. But while Chaos losing about half of his HP, he'll still ultimately survive that encounter, which will prompt Renewals to now hit the deck and head back into sight. It's great for Renewals to be able to waste that time. And more so than anything, Mocket's inability to drone and push together onto a certain part of the map where you could have loaded up utility. Yeah. Well, that's a problem. And now look at this. 20 seconds ago, Renewals moved, and Mocket are now just starting to try and clear out that part of Statuary, which has allowed Vitalin to creep all the way up and is on the hottest flank of 2019, waiting to see what he can accomplish. He's got some destruction in front of him, and he's very patient for the time being as nobody's there. Uh -oh, uh -oh. He doesn't see the Sophia, though. Oh, no! Oh, no! Rips turns around, and Vitalin not checking his corners. That'll be a gift for Mocket. That one went from the hottest flank of 2019 to the most non-existent flank of 2019. He could have done so much damage, it just didn't happen for him. You gotta clear your corners, like you said, Parker. Now the rest of Chaos is still in a good position to hold this out. Got the Nitro Cell in the hands of Red Groove, and he can easily deny that Diffuse plant when it comes in to the laundry doorway, if given the opportunity. Full top floor control for Mocket, and they have the wall into A open, so they have access, but you can see secretly playing prox close proximity, and he's got that shotgun SMG combo that's gonna do him some massive favors. Able to get the headshot onto Corey in the initial engagement. 15 seconds left, initial should have happened way earlier. Crips able to get KS as well. The rush here from Mocket working against him, and a three for Crips, and Renewals gets the final kill. Just an absolute slaughter there. I thought Secretly was gonna have to do more work, but not the case. Chaos managed to lock it out. That's three in a row for them. Mock at a team that looked so hot finishing last season. They, everybody doubted them every single step of the way. It felt like every matchup, even to some extent, myself included, thinking at some point Mock is going to drop one game, they might not make the LAN finals in Rio, but they proved everybody wrong. This has been a rough start so far through match one and now as well 
on to match two. I'm no doubt that Chaos is also benefiting from the fact that they are playing on a very defender-sided map and winning the defenses. But one thing Chaos has done is they have now completed a full rotation. Typically, can. even on the most defender-sided maps, you're usually going to lose at least one of your first three sites, typically. Yeah, it, it, it will happen in that in that initial that that initial three site, uh, and sometimes it happens in the second set. But it is weird to see every time uh, two teams that are so close, even on a map that's defender sided, two teams that are so close, like Mocket and Chaos, and not a single one of the uh, initial set of sites goes the way of the attacking team. It's just weird, especially. I mean, Kitchen of all sites too is it was one of those that you you. Usually considered to be the low-hanging fruit for the attacking team on a map like Villa, you know you can you can understand why AVG and Trophy go the way of the defense. But Kitchen, yeah, kind of comes across as that. Hey, you should probably win here if you want to win this half or have any chance of coming back in the second half. Not the case though for Mocket. They're definitely struggling here. Um, every time they got get into a fight with Chaos, it seems like they're losing it, and that's that's not that's not good. Another thing is, yeah. Really inefficient droning. You you touched on it uh, when it was happening actually in the previous round. Uh, Maestro fell back, and 20 seconds later, Mocket decided to start droning out the position he was in. So they were chasing his ghost. That's that's not what you want to see, especially on Villa, where roam clearing is so important. I don't try to obviously speak poorly of teams, but that was exceedingly poor coordination there. Yeah. You wasted 20 to 30 seconds. You wasted utility to do it. You were very lucky that you walked away with a kill, which was solely because Vitalin did not actually check the corner the way that he needed to do. And how do you solve that? First things first, you say, this is our droner. Once that guy runs out of drones, here's our secondary droner and our tertiary droner. And then, you know, you move from on and on. It's not really complicated. It's a very different story to what we saw out of the G2 secret matchup, where both teams had two people droning in a lot of times their fraggers, except for when Leon Gids has decided to do whatever he may do. KS swapping off of the fragging entry roll onto more of a utility-based operator, going to the hard breacher of Thermite, will manage to get the vault wall as Chaos opens things up by getting a kill onto Corey, who is now on the Ash. So, excellent job from Chaos, who rather doesn't actually get the vault wall. My apologies. I was uh, I was actually mislooking as to the location. But four kills coming out as KS, uh, the last man standing. <laughs> <His team. laughs> and there goes Rips and Chaos just beating back the clock right now, leaving Mocket to just tread water for the next minute or so. Only a meter off of that diffuser as Chaos will now need to start his approach onto the site. And surely with Chaos having three bodies, they're going to have every single angle in here covered. Chaos only has two ways. His approach will be called out after hitting a goo mine on the path to getting in towards the site. Chaos has done it before. Uh, he might be able to do it again. He's got enough time to make this happen, and he's being very cautious. If he gets one or two picks early on into this fight, he could Attack bring it back for his team. That's very unlikely. You could see he's caught between a rock and a hard place, and the pre-fire not going to land. Secret shot, or secretly shot, will, and uh, Chaos take another. That's four in a row. Going from team secret to secretly? We t I talked about it. It's the, a tongue twister. I talked about it in the break before we started the match. I actually put it out. I was like, oh, no. I'm casting secretly now. What's going to happen? But all that is uh, just banter. I mean, we've got Chaos right now in commanding lead. And it seems like this half is, well, the half is already won for Chaos. But more than that, uh, it just feels like there's not a whole lot that Mocket are giving us to root for. Uh, you know, we're, we're not seeing sh uh, shades of a comeback here from Mocket, at least not on the attacking half. And that leads me to believe that we're going to end this in a 6-0 in, a in uh, Chaos's favor, and then we're going to go to the second half, and Mocket might start racking up some kill or some kills in some rounds because, yeah, they're on defense now. Attackers need to locate and defuse but many we've talked about this before. Can. When you're on match point going into the second half, it is so, so very hard to win every single round and get that uh, get that draw. It's it's mentally defeating, I would say, is probably yeah. the best way of putting it, is that you have to essentially try to come in here for a draw, which we haven't seen actually yet. I don't 
We have, we, have we not seen it? I don't think we, no, we haven't seen because it's, NA didn't have one and we've only seen one play day of North America so far. Latin America hasn't seen a draw and EU didn't see a draw last night. Yeah, so no so, draws yet. So for those that are wondering, no, we did not get rid of draws. They are still very possible. Mm -hmm. It just, they haven't happened because as we talked about those, last time we were casting. Those two rounds being mm -hmm. added Attackers have made a world of difference. It's just so, it's, it's, I think it's clearer Games have been better. Yeah. Exciting. There have been decisive finishes to matches. Say what you will about draws. Draws are quite fair. If after 12 rounds, one team is not better than the other, fine. Give them both points and move on. Yeah. But I think that a decisive conclusion is exciting in a lot of circumstances. And this change, big ups to the people at either ESL or Ubisoft who made that call because it has proven to be a very beneficial one for the teams and for the viewers. Absolutely agreed there. Now, in this round, we see Mocket. Trying to clear out those roamers once more. There's nobody roaming on the north side top floor, so it was a pretty easy clear. Only a minute expended in that endeavor. The drones, though, are being dispatched quite easily. The drone economy management for Mocket has been what pretty poor. Shot. That was that. Yeah, exactly. It was a beautiful shot there from Rips onto Renewals. Uh, Maestro gone early, and uh, Renewals also one of the top fraggers, I believe. Uh, for the defense. So having him gone, there you go. Yeah, the uh, top fragger. Oh, he's got two people bump controllers with him. Now, the top fragger being gone and the maestro at that is going to really help mock it when they go for that actual snipe push. Yeah, that's that's a tough loss for Chaos in terms of utility. Obviously, it's a tough loss as well for just killing potential with that gun, too. And you've had the only ACOG that was available on Chaos's side of things, too. So the only operator that could be able to hold down such a long-range engagement, of which there are quite a few sight lines that can be very, very hard to manage. But no ACOG necessary there for either Red Groove or Secretly, as Chaos doubles up to take out Corey, and then Vale falls two from Crips. So Mocket will lose its hardest utility-based operator in the Capitao, and then also, or hardiest utility-based operator in the Capitao, and then one of the two hard breachers as well in Corey's Hibana. That is a swing back that strongly favors Chaos. But, hello? Look at that. Chaos trying to get the vault wall as Red Groove manages to drop the bandit battery at the perfect moment. Cryon's EMP will not take out the bandit battery, so Chaos, a bit flummoxed, will now need to just simply head towards the bomb site. It'll be vital and waiting patiently. Spread the leather sofa, anticipating a push in. But there's another set of eyes that will be over there as well. You've got Crips watching it. And because there's a numbers advantage from Chaos, they're primed and ready to greet Mocket. Look at how much time it just took Mocket to get that battery, but at the same time, there's still a bandit on the wall. It doesn't matter. That is the serious lack of coordination on Mocket's side. Rips must be out of concussive blasts because that could have stopped them in their tracks. But Vitalin picking up one kill, he's positioned to grab a second. That's Diffuser down and the newest member of Chaos doing great work with Crips. Diving in as well and all is falling apart the seams for Mocket as Chaos, the literal definition of their name through five rounds, overwhelming the German squad. And they're one round away from being perfect through their first defense of half. I would not be surprised if they finish this defensive half perfectly with the 6-0 in the slightest. I mean, it's looked like absolute domination here for Chaos. There is not really a question in my mind that they're going to be able to walk away with this. See Clash being brought out there. Maybe going to six pick away from the Clash. You don't actually see her played very often. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Yep. Go ahead and change that. There you go, Red Groove. Yep. All right. So good to see that happen. Uh, Clash, definitely an operator that after her nerfs, uh, not great. Not great at all, especially uh, at this level of play. So every time you see her, it's really weird. And, you know, considering how well Chaos has been playing, I don't think they need to experiment. So... Yeah, at least they made Mockets think about, hey, they might have a shield. Now, moving on from that, Chaos have come full circle twice. They're going to Kitchen for the second time, and this is the third site that they will defend two times in a, uh, two times total in this first half because they haven't lost anything. So if they're able to make this happen, then a uh, very impressive first half to this match. And also, if nothing else, a guaranteed draw, though, again, we haven't seen a draw yet this season, so that would be surprising to happen. So far today, everybody's brackets, I feel, have been busted. 
What, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean, in the first matchup, Penta and Lestream, you know, people, I think a lot of people thought Penta was going to win. I thought it was going to be a close match. <laughs> people thought G2 was going to win. And I think a lot of people, well, by the community vote, people thought that Mocket was going to win as well. So, uh, very similar to runs that uh, teams go on for uh, March Madness, which is a reference that I guess I probably should have saved for North America. As is that a sports thing? It is a sports thing. It's a okay. basketball thing. Corey takes out Vitalin, and Vitalin takes out Corey. They literally hit each other at the exact same time. Both the Ash and the Jaeger are down, and I think somewhere a ranked star dies because you lost an Ash and a Jaeger at the same time. Yeah, that's how it works. Every time uh, you do that, a uh, ranked star gains its wings. Yes, and also uh, that ranked star... Uh, happened to be uh, high silver. Now, 5-0 going on 6-0 here for Chaos. Ouch. But, uh, ouch. <laughs> Crips is going to be downed all the way by Astronomy and finished off by KS. This looks like we could have the first Mocket round in the bag. It's not over just yet. Got more than half the round here for Mocket to execute onto the bomb site. Got full vertical control, which is going to aid them quite a lot. Secretly doing his best to maybe refrag. The shotgun can do a lot of work through these bars, but that's a high ceiling there. And uh, it's going to be hard to pull it off. Switches to the SMG 11, that's the right call, in my opinion. Chaos working his way towards Laundry. Secretly is going to get that kill that he was fishing for for so very long. And it was through the drop down. Hunting for more, though, and he is going to eat a lot of damage as he attempts to fall back. and. Gets away with his life, and gas canister still in hand, and a kill as well to boot. So that's a pretty good run there for secretly playing on the Razor's Edge. Attackers have recovered still quite defense. low on HP, though, so the smoke will have to try and survive the next minute of action with tons of soft destruction in the hands of Mocket. Being able to use both the Zofia and Buck gadgets to try and crack open the tough nut that is Chaos's defense. And there you go, Renewal's picking off rips will give his team the advantage. A frag grenade tossed out should be able to clear the evil eye. Everybody from Chaos is just going to stand and wait as a beautiful shot from Red Groove will leave Cryon all on his lonesome on and top of Red Stairs. All of the gas canisters are still in play here, and it's not even going to matter because Secretly is probably going to get this shotgun kill. Easy blast, but he misses it. Renewal's able to get the refrag, and there you go, the first half. Out totally in favor of Chaos, a perfect half at that, 6-0, and now match point. A flawless first half. You don't often see those. Um, Have we seen any of them yet? I don't know. Like, I, I haven't casted any. This is the first time. I mean, I don't, so I've only, only from the matches that we've casted, no, there hasn't been a perfect half. Um, I can't. I can't recall yesterday, because I don't remember. The only one that I would wonder about would be the Mocket and uh, Lestream losses, but I don't think they were perfect rounds. I don't have that info at my fingertips. Yeah, well... I mean, I technically do if I was to go on my phone and go to uh, Liquipedia. I'm not going to do that right now. But I'm not going to do that. Yeah, no, I'm not going to do that right now either, Park Parker. Uh, but Chaos finds themselves on match point, and mm -hmm. it's been a flawless round, and we'll see if Mocket... <laughs> I mean, Mocket are going to need to repeat that. Yeah, I, I don't... I don't see that as likely. So we've talked. We talked about this earlier. Uh, <laughs> you, any team, sure. Okay, let's say it's defensive sided on any map. Let's say it's seventy-five percent win rate on a map for defense, which would be exponentially defender sided. Let's say that's the case, and you rack up that perfect half on defense. You could make the argument that the other team is going to be able to be capable of the very same feat. Camera feet up and running. But they Ball now have the disadvantage of being up against the wall. They're the ones who have the low morale, who have the uh, the complication in their head of like, oh wow, we just lost six rounds in a row. And you are riding the high of winning six rounds in a row. I mean, it, it, it's def definitely a situation where Chaos should, yeah, they should win one of the next six rounds. This, the, the odds of, of Mocket making a full comeback here and winning six in a row, slim to none in, in my mind. But that being said, we will need to see two perfect halves in order to get to a draw, right? Yeah. And the it, likelihood of that happening. It's possible, however, Reloading. improbable. Possible, but improbable. Yeah. Is a good way of putting it, Michael. 
Well, we've got two minutes-ish left to see if Chaos are going to be able to pull off the first 7-0 in Pro League. Keep in mind that the very first 7-0 under new Pro League rule sets were uh, coming on behalf of Space Station Gaming, who actually did two 7-0s, being in the very first 14-0 over a mini golf guta in the uh, DreamHack Winter. Oh, yeah. Um... I guess it was the group stages. It was played off stream. So they were the first ones to, uh, I guess, to, to claim that honor. But we haven't seen one in Pro League, and I think that's a distinction that needs to be made. Secretly really setting up his nade. He could actually get the smoke, but no, it's going to be a little too far there to the west. And uh, nice attempt, though. That is a location that people commonly sit in. You can see the impact tricking going on there. I don't think it was successful. I think Vito managed to get the wall open. So a nice try there from KS, but no... Cigar. Yeah, this is this is a problem right now, and this is one of the reasons why Mira is often picked on this site when we do exactly. tend to see her, is because mm -hmm. you need to be able to pick off an exothermic charge or the Xkaros onto the study wall. Once the study walls are opened, it basically means that most of the defenders need to evacuate the site. And right now, at least for Mocket, there's only one panel that's opened up. Corey will peek a little bit too early, and Renewals will be there, continuing on the great game that he's having with secretly taking out Vale. And Mocket are, at the moment, barreling towards an 0-7 against Chaos, as they look towards 90, which is where two members of Mock It R. Brian, who has been a little quiet so far, the newest member, obviously coming in to replace Baka Brian. He's going to have to do uh, some work here on Red Stairs. Looks like the beginning of the end for Mock It. And then they got good positioning right now, all things considered. But as you see, secretly actually going to get down. So that's the first for Mock It, but they aren't able to secure it going into the dying seconds of this round. Rips' his head will peek out for just a second, but Red Groove not fast enough on the reflexes to be able to take it off. Secretly will be out of action for the remainder of the 30 seconds, as Chaos knows that they can taste this match point. They've got bodies to throw at the problem, and on Red Stairs, there's Cry, and he'll peek right back up. Chaos is there to take out Crips, and Renewals will pick up his third kill. Chaos on a last man stand, but Red Groove will shut it down, and ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the Swedes, will take Pro League's very first 7-0, not just this season, but under the new rule set. Congratulations to them. That's a big win. This Chaos will pick up their second win in 48 hours. Good job to Chaos managing to get that. Uh, very impressive, seriously. Um, not only is that their uh, second win, but I think they are also the only team to have two wins so far from this team, or for, from this region, rather. That is correct, because the other...